What's up guys? Daniel at DLife HD and it has been a really long time since we've come out with any videos but we are back. A lot has been going on since we put out any videos so we're going to go back and review some of the things we never got the chance to talk about before we fell off the face of the earth including our 10 best mobile game releases of 2022. So in no particular order let's get into it. And first off Alien Isolation. I was definitely surprised when this came out to mobile because it's a full-fledged version of the console game. It's from the exact same people that created Grid and ported it over to mobile and I have to say it's very well made. This one's definitely not for the pain of heart because it's a survival horror game. You're basically up in space avoiding being attacked by aliens. The graphics are great, it has controller support, the story and voice acting is great too. I highly recommend this one. Next, Streets of Rage 4. I was able to play this one when it first released on the Switch. I enjoyed it so much when it came out on mobile. I had to get it there too and it didn't disappoint. The gameplay is amazing both with touchscreen and with gamepad support. Everything else plays the exact same as the Switch version. The mobile version even includes the Mr. X Nightmare DLC, which adds even more content to this amazing game. If there was one thing that was negative about this game, I would say that it's the extra left and right borders that they add to the mobile screen. I wish they could adjust the game to fit full screen. Now, Wreckfest. This game is just freaking fun. Whether it's completely demolishing your car or racing through some great dirt courses. It's all in the very fun package that also happens to look really nice. It's not quite as good as the console counterpart, but it's close enough to be comparable. There are several modes, different ways to race, and just tons of content to go through. If you're looking for a fun dirt racing type of game, this is the way to go. It's not exactly simulation, but it's also not exactly arcade racer. So, if that's what you're looking for, it's a fantastic game. Next is Horizon Chase 2. This is one of the best arcade racing games that I think I've ever played, and part 2 takes the successful formula of the first part and just makes it even better. This new version adds the ability to completely customize your car, everything from your paint, body style, tires, and car internals. Even the internals upgrade was in the first one and it's not quite as in-depth as this one. The graphics are also now three-dimensional than the previous version. It's now not quite as retro-like as the first one which makes all the courses feel much larger. Now, Turner Boy commits tax evasion. This is an excellent old school Zelda like game. If you like those old Zelda games, you'll absolutely love this game because it takes the exact same formula and adds a good bit of humor to it. The game is actually really hilarious and got me to thinking many times that maybe Turner Boy is onto something with this tax evasion thing. <laughs> I'm just joking. Or am I? Nah, I'm kidding. It's illegal, kids. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, it also has controller support, so you can play both with touch or controllers. Up next, NBA 2K23, probably my favorite game of the bunch just because I'm a big basketball fan. This one in particular though is the best mobile version that has ever released. Unfortunately, it's only on iOS, but what can you do, right? Get an iPhone. This new 2K23 version now has commentary, which is amazing because all the other Apple Arcade versions didn't have it, and the premium versions that were released on mobile before had commentary, but was really dodgy because sometimes you get audio, sometimes you wouldn't, sometimes you'd get crackling or late audio. Well, you don't get that anymore, and it's refreshing. It's also great that they added great modes, which includes the GOAT, Michael Jordan, the only GOAT. Yeah, I said it. The only thing that I don't like about this version is that it still doesn't have in-game saving. Come on, 2K. This is a mobile game, which means we don't always have time to play all four quarters, so we need to save in-game. Other than that, this game is fantastic. Now, let's talk about Undesta. This is a very interesting game. It's a mix of dodgeball and a turn-based grid strategy game. In this game, you're a girl who goes back to her hometown, and it brings back memories of everyone in her childhood that she had issues with. For every level, you're basically playing against those people, and once you beat them, they forgive you and join your team. Every person has different power-ups that they can use. Some of them have the power to have multiple shots by deflecting the ball off things and catching it. Others can teleport and so on and so forth. It's a really innovative game that with a really good story. 
Up next, Vampire Survivors. In Vampire Survivors, you basically take on the role of a survivor in a world overrun by vampires set in a post-apocalyptic world where the vampire virus has turned most humans into bloodthirsty creatures. You start out by picking a character type, navigate through the dangerous environment, trying to survive and gain various weapons, skills, and upgrades that can be unlocked as you go through the game. Most times playing over and over and over to enhance your chances of survival. Next is Immortality. Now, this one is a game that I played the least of. In fact, I barely played it. But apparently people loved it a lot because it has excellent score on Metacritic. My friend in real life also said that he played it and absolutely loved it. Apparently, it's about a lady who has disappeared and you're working through video footage in order to discover what happened to her. I imagine this would be amazing on the iPad because of the touchscreen interface. Definitely a game to check out if you like those type of games. Last but not least, Wildflowers. Probably the best Apple Arcade release from last year. It's a mix of a game like Harvest Moon and My Time in Porsche, but just better. The story is great, the scenery is fantastic, the characters all leave their own personality and their own distinct stories as well. You have the option of slowly getting to know each person and they tell you a bit about themselves every time you talk to them. In the game, you're basically a witch and you discover that your family was in it as well. You do a lot of planning, fishing, harvesting, cooking, and building. It's an amazing game and you'll never get bored of exploring and learning more about the main character and others. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We're planning on coming out with more consistent videos now. I'm not sure how many per week exactly, but our goal is to at least do a couple videos a week until everyone else begins to make their way back to the channel. There have been a lot of changes in everyone's life, and we're just playing it by ear. And remember to like and subscribe for more content like this, and follow us on Twitter if you want to. Not that I'm posting much there anymore, but it's definitely somewhere where you can contact us. With that said, I missed saying this, but remember to always stay one up.